Today, Nvidia is dominating Steam. AMD just did something big. A new CPU just beat AMD and Intel's best. This is huge, and Ryzen 9000 support gets added. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's new time and first up for today, Nvidia's RTX 3060 just saw a pretty big jump in this month's Steam hardware survey. For those who don't know, every month Steam does a survey with their users and they share the data that they receive, and one of those data points being the GPUs that they use. And as you can see right here, you can see the RTX 3060 actually jumped by 0.75% from February to March. Now, that obviously may not sound like a lot, but it's a pretty big change for just one month. And this change actually gets it close to a whopping 7% of all GPUs used on Steam, or at least of the ones who took the survey, but obviously there is a large enough number of people that you can at least gather some data from this, like the fact that the 3060 is the number one GPU. And when we go down this list, you'll see then we have the 2060, the 1650, 3060 Ti, 3070, you're starting to notice every single one of these or NVIDIA GPUs. Of course, if you go low enough, you will eventually find AMD cards, but in these top ones right here, they are completely dominated by NVIDIA. Basically, AMD does seem to be lagging behind here, but there is at least some potential for the company with their next-gen GPUs, because as you can see, most of the top chips are more of your mid-range cards. None of these are 4070, 4080. Yes, there is a 3080 here, 3070, but obviously those cards are cheaper now because they are last gen. But as much as we talk about cards like the 4090, 4080, the much higher end GPUs, Clearly, not that many gamers are actually buying them. And with that, don't forget that AMD's next-gen GPUs, from all that we've heard, is mostly going to be focusing on the mid-range. And without the drive for AMD to compete on the highest end of the market, this could actually allow AMD to really focus on the mid-range and make it a really great mid-range card, like what we've seen with, say, the 580, the RX 580, RX 480, cards like that that were really awesome price to performance. And obviously, that is where most gamers are purchasing cards. So if AMD really does do this, they could end up getting a shot at the top of this list. But at least for now, Nvidia completely dominates it. But first, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel and you love PC hardware like I do, you love to keep up with all the newest PC hardware news, make sure you subscribe to Gamer Meld. And next up for today, with all of that said, there is some great news coming out of AMD. Specifically, AMD just announced that their ROCM software is going to be going open source. For those who don't know, I've been over it a couple times, but basically ROCM is AMD's software suite meant to compete with Nvidia's CUDA. And CUDA being one of, if not the biggest reason why Nvidia completely and utterly owns the AI market. So this is basically AMD's attempt at making ROCM way better. And you know what? It really might work. This originally may have actually spawned from the Tiny Corp. For those that don't know, it was started by George Hotz of Comeda AI fame, which is basically self-driving software, very interesting stuff that he's done in the past, but now he started Tiny Corp. And they make the Tiny Box, and basically for a little while, he's been complaining about AMD's firmware. And at least for now, it looks like AMD is listening. As you can see right down here, it says, as community interest grows in ROCM1 Radeon, we've created a tracker to capture feedback and provide updates. Also, coming soon, open sourcing additional portions of our software stack and more hardware documentation. Basically, if AMD does start open sourcing ROCM, it could allow development to start happening much faster and actually become a competitor to NVIDIA. And next up, we have a really big story. I've been discussing this for a little while now, but now we have one of our first benchmarks of the upcoming Snapdragon X Elite CPU. As you can see right down here, this Twitter user actually shared some performance figures of the upcoming Snapdragon X Elite CPU in Geekbench 6. And when it comes to the performance itself, as you can see, the Snapdragon X Elite actually beats both Intel and AMD CPUs, their best 
mobile CPUs right now, and it's mobile because the Snapdragon X Elite is a mobile CPU in and of itself. And don't forget that this is actually made to work with Windows. So Snapdragon is bringing a serious competitor to AMD and Nvidia on Windows. As you can see here, in single core it got 2,427, and in multi core it got a whopping 14,254. Compare that to the next best, the Ryzen 9 8945HS, which only got 11,650. Now, Geekbench obviously isn't the end-all be-all when it comes to synthetic benchmarks or anything like that. Obviously, more tests need to be done, but at least for now, this looks really interesting. And lastly for today, it looks like AMD's Ryzen 9000 series is coming even sooner than we originally thought. As you can see right down here, it says Exus recently rolled out a firmware update for its ROG Crosshair and ROG Strix X670E motherboard series, enabling support for DDR5 memory up to 200 blah 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 blah. The important part here is that the firmware listed as 1170 Fire Range Pi features an upgraded Agisa version 1.1.7.0 paving the way for compatibility for AMD's upcoming Zen 5 CPUs. Now, obviously, it does say Fire Range, which is the next-gen mobile platform, but it is based on Granite Ridge, which is the desktop CPUs. And obviously, this is an AM5 update. It even says Granite Ridge right there. So this is basically adding support for AMD's next-gen Ryzen 9000 CPUs. As Video Cards does mention, this follows the update to add Ryzen 8000 G-Series APUs based on Phoenix architecture, but the initial firmware supporting the APUs were released five months prior to the official launch. So of course, we could still have a few months left, but still, five months isn't that bad at all. Basically, AMD is gearing up for their Ryzen 9000 release. And don't forget that I actually just discussed the fact that some rumors were seriously claiming that it got a whopping 40% core for core performance upgrade over Ryzen 7000. So this could seriously be a monster of a release. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's next-gen Ryzen 9000 CPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day!